the department began a very rapid turn on thinking about how to meet the current problem, set conditions to improve globally, but how to organizationally structure itself uh, to pace what was going to be this new uh, threat space. And so that began, uh, let's accelerate uh, and establish a sub-unified command, United States Cyber Command, uh, under U.S. Strategic Command, and then let's do that consistently across the board. The way that you close that gap between the present uh, uncertainty and the future and its ambiguity uh, is through the mission that we do, which is understand the adversary, uh, seek to understand their intentions, pursue them uh, in spectrum so that you can understand their data and their information and their cultural insight and assessment, and that you bring that to a decision maker uh, with very little latency, as close to real time, the highest degree of confidence, and value-added context. Uh, and that is what we have been doing. That is what the foundations of our history and our culture have propelled us to this point. Uh, and that is just more of what we must do uh, in the future so that we shape it uh, for the outcomes that we desire. Uh, in the interest of the United States, absolutely, uh, but also for our partners and allies. In the CNO, uh, Admiral Gary Ruff had tasked me with operationalizing uh, cyber to include electronic warfare in space, uh, which was a, a huge challenge. Uh, there's 27 commands and I think there was 17,000 folks. Uh, and they all work for different organizations and all of a sudden we put out an op order and they all work for us. Uh, so it was try to get all aspects of cyber funnel through one commander uh, to both uh, oper operate, defend uh, the networks uh, and uh, execute missions as defined by uh, which was then a sub-unified command, uh, U.S. Cyber Command. You know, I, I looked at it a lot from a uh, command and control aspect, from, from a defense perspective, because if you don't have C2, you can't conduct any operations. And I think that's what CNO was looking for at the time, was to get an operational aspect in execution into what had been sort of a support function prior to that. The task force organization uh, that was put together uh, and enabled the command to execute missions, I thought that was... Uh, uh, very well done and that was a great achievement. And then the op center that we put together with the feeds that came into it and the visibility that that provided the commander to monitor network ops, I thought that was a, that was a huge success. I think the biggest challenge that I had and we had was besides putting together the staff from scratch, it was to explain to the rest of the Navy why we were important. Why we suddenly established U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and re-established Com 10th Fleet. Um, it, uh, the Navy needed to know what had changed in the aspect of Navy networks, cryptology, communications, network security, etc. And there were a lot of challenges in those opening days as far as both putting together the organization and identifying the issues that we had and then explaining why it was important to the ships, the submarines, the aircraft, shore commands, all the fleet commanders, why this is important. I think there was a recognition among the Navy's leadership that cyber represented a new operational domain. And it was a domain in which we, as a tactical warfighting organization, were going to have to be prepared to operate. And that series of operations was involved the spectrum from the defensive to the offensive. And my focus really was on, so you got a basic structure and now you got to operationalize, you got to make it real and you've got to turn it into a warfighting organization. Not just an idea, you got to turn it into a warfighting organization. Fleet Cyber Command was only a few years old when I arrived. So getting people to know and understand that we exist and they understand who Fleet Cyber Command, 10th Fleet was, and that our commands, those two commands weren't the same. I was able to travel and visit our commands around the world and learn their challenges that they were experiencing, 
and when needed, I would engage with the host command to ensure the sailors and the families were being taken care of. I also had the ability to speak directly to the fleet commander to get their level of engagement when necessary. Being able to pull together all of the capabilities of Fleet Cyber Command um, as it pertained to both NSA and to U.S. Cyber Command as the Navy component and, and presenting the Navy component of that warfighting element, I think was, was critically important. Um, with Cyber Command, we were in the process of building up the teams. So there was a lot of moving parts that were Navy focused, NSA focused, and US Cybercom focused all at the same time. So I thought of my time, um, you know, when I had the privilege to lead Fleet Cyber Command as really a building, rebuilding period for, for Fleet Cyber Command. I think um, creating the sort of the strategic narrative, which I don't consider my accomplishment, but I consider it accomplishment of the whole fleet. We, we put the bones together of what our strategic plan would be in terms of defining ourselves and defining what good looks like. And all the leaders from throughout the fleet um, helped us work on that plan and articulate it in a way that was understandable to the sailors inside of the fleet, the fleet writ large, and then our partners in the, in the DOD and IC uh, domain. My message for you today is this, what you do matters. It matters to our Navy, it matters to our country's national security, and it matters to our family, to our friends and our loved ones who may never know what you do for our nation. Never forget that. We're not fighting an enemy that people can see and we're not fighting a war where international norms exist. But make no mistake, we are in conflict day in and day out in the cyber realm. You all are on the front lines of that fight. I have the opportunity to travel across all of our commands and they amaze me every time I visit a command. Just the pure talent that we have in this community just absolutely amazes me. I said I grew up in this community. I think we had talent then, but it just continues to get better. And I just think because the sailors love what they do. Seeing sailors excel in this community is a great honor. And we by far have the best and the brightest in this community. So the biggest accomplishment for me is coming to work every day. <laughs> and being able to work with our sailors in the community. The story that we say is that uh, you have to own it inside the lifelines of your ship. Uh, and that's just a metaphor for everywhere that the Navy is, uh, they're gonna interact in cyberspace and we need to be better operators and better owners and better professionals. Two things uh, that I wanted to solidify. In my previous comments about cyberspace is intended to also be full spectrum. So it's offense, it's defense, it's network operations, it's sustainment, it's provision. Uh, it's exploit and it's attack, it's across the board. And every sailor in the Navy's information warfare and 10 fleet enterprise is involved in that. For our ITs, Right, the second largest rating in the Navy. Uh, we needed to get them into a warfighting mindset. We needed to expect them to be local defenders everywhere that they are. We needed to upgun, upskill, up-professionalize, up-expect uh, that workforce. We needed to give them better tools, better training, better awareness, better visibility, because they know that network. They should be our persistent and always first line of, uh, of defense excellence. We needed to, in my judgment, up our cryptologic game. Right? So our Navy has a wonderful history, and I would say our modern era Navy is built on both a failure uh, at Pearl Harbor in uh, 1941, December, and the success at Midway in June of 1942. Uh, and that is what uh, the last 75 plus years uh, has been for the Navy, its cryptologists, and its relationship to the fleet, to the national community and decision makers, and bridging that distance uh, to make it as, uh, as thinner, smaller, leaner, and faster as possible.
I think the passage of time, a decade, has only demonstrated, only shown that the fundamental decision that we made about the need for this capability was very farsighted. Clearly, the level of activity in the cyber domain and within the broader information dynamic is only growing in significance, in potential operational impact. And I think one of the challenges for the Navy is going to be, so how do we learn to fight, to operate, in this environment in which the spectrum, the information dynamic, the world of cyber space are increasingly integrated. And I think that's gonna be one of the challenges for the Navy, and I would argue for the department as a whole in the coming decade. And I think 10th Fleet, Fleet Cyber Command is gonna play a significant role in that. Having Fleet Cyber Command um, delivering on operational outcomes for the United States Navy, for the Department of Defense and national security is what's going to shape our value and the importance that the Navy places on Fleet Cyber Command. And so I would just say to all of uh, uh, the previous commanders, um, uh, you, each of you, and your respective uh, Fleet Master Chiefs uh, set conditions for all subsequent and future commanders to be successful. So that is a, a, a vote of uh, thanks, uh, but also admiration for the work that you've done. The, the things that, uh, that we have been able to achieve inside the Navy's information warfare community, moving from having no community to having an information dominance core to now an information warfare community uh, has been a seminal change. We have a maturing and uh, more effective uh, Fleet Cyber Command 10th Fleet. So all of that together, all spectrum, independent of protocol, totally mobile, uh, codes and modes, everywhere that we have a sensor front. Hey 10th Fleet, this year we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of US 10th Fleet Fleet Cyber Command. Congratulations on this significant milestone. It's due in large part to you and your predecessor's efforts. And I, for one, am extremely grateful. Happy birthday, Flea Cyber. It has been an amazing 10 years, and I cannot imagine what the next 10 years in stores for us. Continue to do all of the great things that you're doing supporting the commander and the men and women of 10th Fleet and Fleet Cyber and I look forward to all of the things that are going to come. I want to say happy birthday to the men and women of Fleet Cyber Command and the U.S. 10th Fleet. I am incredibly proud of all you have accomplished to date and I can't wait to see where you go in the future. Happy 10th birthday, Fleet Cyber Command. You look marvelous. I appreciate you all for keeping the fighting spirit of the Navy alive and well back at headquarters and around the world. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And that happy birthday goes to both you, the men and women who do the work every day, but I also want to take a moment to thank your families because I know you couldn't do what you do without those teammates. And the greatest teammate we have in life are our spouses, our families, our significant others. And so I thank you and I thank them for your continued devotion and your service to the nation. Keep driving and happy birthday. Well, I would like to say to the men and women of U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and the U.S. 10th Fleet, a very happy 10th anniversary. And we will celebrate many of these in the years to come. Thank you. And I'd like to wish each and one of you, every one of you a very uh, happy 10th anniversary and compliment you on the uh, tremendous success that's been achieved over the last 10 years. Happy birthday, 10th Fleet. Congratulations on the last decade of outstanding support to our nation and our Navy. As your TICOM, I can't wait for the next decade ahead and all the good work that we are going to do on behalf of our warfighters and our nation. Again, happy birthday. I just wish for you, uh, shipmates, uh, once and always, friends, colleagues, mentors, sailors, deck plates, white hats, blue jackets, the goat locker, first class mess, wardroom, uh, all of our civilians. Uh, 
It has been a magnificent decade. And I have every confidence that we will be around for not only another decade, but multiple decades. Uh, it has been an extraordinarily uh, fun, dynamic challenge. Every day uh, has been uh, witnessing and observing uh, the decisions that you make calmly, professionally, well-informed, well-constructed, part of a team, purposeful, right, in presenting the Navy as ambassadors of the Navy uh, and our community to itself and to the nation and to the globe. Uh, you, in fact, are the only part of the fleet that is genuinely everywhere all the time that makes the rest of the fleet operate forward. Uh, and I just uh, would invite all of you to uh, take a pause on this uh, 10th birthday for 10th Fleet. Uh, pat yourself on the back. Uh, think a little bit about what you want to do uh, over your next decade, right? In uniform, out of uniform, uh, but in this mission space. Uh, continue to lead, uh, continue to challenge the assumptions about how we organize and drive change, accept that change is going to come, and so choose to lead that as well. And uh, that, through continuous learning and pursuit of excellence in your tradecraft and your profession, uh, is how we will win uh, and be victorious in this uh, competition. It's how we're going to avoid a Cold War. Uh, it's how we will dominate in conflict if uh, called upon. And it's how we will keep our Navy and our nation secure now and in the future. So thank you very much. And for 10th Fleet, happy birthday.